Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the last day of October 2023. Around the virtual table you have Thema du Portal, myself, Hervé Lemeur, Mark White and Kevin Martins. Hello everyone. So weekly, the weekly core release 2.430 is in progress. So right now we have war Packages and container image tag is being built. Yeah, I've, it might be finished already. I haven't checked since the past 15 minutes, but it's, it's a matter of minutes. Uh, is there anything special for that weekly, Mark or Kevin? Because I haven't checked the change log uh, contents to see if there were important changes in the core. So there was there was one regression fix in the in it that's been asked to be backported to 2.426.1. And so that backport will be included in the backporting pull request later today. And then the backporting pull request should merge today so that we can release an, a release candidate of the back of 2.426.1 tomorrow assuming I get myself configured on the VPN. <laughs> hmm. Fair. Hmm. Is there anything else to add on the weekly core release? Nope. Okay. So as soon as the container image is okay, I will deploy it to weekly and infra CI controllers since Stefan is not there. Unless you want to do it, uh, Hervé, I don't mind. Do you have other announcements, folks? I don't either. So we can start looking at the upcoming calendar. So next week, a weekly release. What a surprise. 2.431 will be released next Tuesday. The next LTS will be 15 November 2023. That will be 2.4. 426.1 with the backport mentioned earlier if everything goes as expected. And the release candidate for that upcoming LTS is tomorrow, 1st of November. Mark White is our release lead. He already started to, to launch a lot of bomb builds last week preparing the release. So nice job. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the public mailing list for security advisory. And we had a successful security advisory for plugins last week. Uh, all the Jenkins infra was patched the same day. You can see the link on that uh, on that email thread or on the public Jenkins IU website on the advisory uh, archive section. Nothing else to add, no new uh, advisory and publicly, so can continue. Is there something else to add? No. Nope. Then next major event, as usual, I don't remember. So I think we have an European DevOps world plan before end of year. Is that correct? Oh, that's right. Yes, we do. So DevOps world. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for remembering that. DevOps world London. Uh, I believe it's in early December. Uh, is coming. It's definitely coming. And then we've um, also yeah. got uh, yep. Jenkins Contributor Summit uh, yep. prior to FOSDEM. I I think these are the two next major events where you will be able to meet Jenkins Infra team member. For London, we have Team Yacom for sure. I don't know for the members. Yeah, right now, I definitely won't be in London and uh, Runcha, Runcha Ye will be in London, but oh, cool. um, others, I am not expecting any other Infra team members to be there except him. Cool. Something else about the upcoming calendar or the major events? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get started on the operational tasks. So we were able to close the following issue. 
uh, branch protection exception on Jenkins security scan repository. Uh, thanks, Hervé. I believe you took care of this uh, checking in with uh, Daniel Beck. Is that correct? Yes. So the second right. issue is the same, same area. The goal of these two issues were to allow Daniel to publish the Jenkins security scan system as GitHub packages on the public uh, Jenkins infra organization. For that, I had to act, um, allow the publication of public packages in the mm -hmm. Jenkins infra organization. Just uh, OK. Makes sense. Thanks for taking care of that. I'm sure Daniel is happy. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah, he gave me a, a high five. Uh... Sweet. Uh, and thanks, uh, Alex, for taking care of uh, resetting Oleg's uh, community the Jenkins io 2 fa system. Because since uh, two months, as far as I can, two or three months, Alex is also an administrator on community Jenkins io. So thanks for uh, taking care of this. Uh, we had, uh, uh, let's say, an issue that don't need to speak about that uh, about this one. We have a few not on the milestone, but yeah, user error thinking uh, about accounts issue. So let's get started on the work in progress. I'm gonna try to order it in terms of pr relative priority. Uh, the most important topic we have today is update center migration to another cloud. So since last week, uh, we were, uh, Stefan was able to, to work on the parallelization of the copy. So it's on the trusted CI Jenkins IO controller, which role is to run every three minutes to generate the JSON and then copy it to the destination that will serve this file. Today, it's a simple process that can run quickly and efficiently because we only have one machine. And the experimentation started by Hervé a few weeks ago and continued by Stefan last week, were around how much time does it take to copy that file to the different mirror destination we are planning to use. Um, so in that case, uh, Parallelization was really efficient. We are running AirSync, AZ copy, and AWS S3 sync at the same time using new parallel with a nice success. The timing uh, looks really good. So uh, update center to script parallelization for JSON deployment works very well. Uh, parallelization and now the we are work in progress on the um, uh, mirror bit scan triggering uh, sorry trigger triggering a mirror bit scan scan as last step of the script so we are working on kubectl Kubernetes config, adding a role-based access to allow only an exec command for that uh, mirror bit scan all command to be executed on the pod. Mm -hmm. So that work was started by Stefan and I handed over to me. I'm working on this right now because Stefan is uh, off for a few days. Uh, so it's in the good direction. Right now we have validated authorization and authentication. Next step is validating connectivity from the trusted agents we will have to um, properly add that machine to the allow list, allow to reach the Kubernetes controller. And finally, adding the credential inside trusted CI and test it on the script. Second work in progress oh, uh, is the mirror bit ingress. So it has been fixed. And now we have to fine tune the ingress rule to only cover the JSON file or the file that we plan to serve only for that service because we reuse the existing ingress from get Jenkins IO, which is set up for distributing way more uh, file extensions such as dev files, PKG files, etc. And so Damien there, what you'll do is, is narrow the things it's allowed to distribute to only be distributing the JSON and JSONP file. Exactly. Okay, cool. Uh, the idea is it, it, it's, it's not about allow or deny. It's about if it 
it's a file that we know is on the mirror, then send it to the mirror bit redirector. Uh -huh. Otherwise, fall back to the Apache server. I see. Which, okay. which has the dot ht access, the same as the current virtual machine, and that will trigger a redirect on its own. But that trigger that trigger is a business rule. It's not a mirror redirection rule. That's not the same uh, destination somehow. Okay. Hervé, did I miss something on what we think or what you had in mind about that topic? Yes, uh, great news. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Kampf uh, got the ownership of the repo. So we will see progress. Um, the creator of uh, VLC, uh, Media Player, retrieved the ownership of this repo. Sorry. And he, he already started to merge uh, documentation for it back. So there will be new version and it's, yeah, it's a great news. Okay, so they have they have effectively adopted Mirrorbits because they are very active users of Mirrorbits. He was in the same team as Netix. He's part of. He's the main. Uh, he's the he's the creator of the team. Netix was part of this team, so they were working. He was already working. He was already a maintainer of this proposal. Okay. He, He's so the, this really isn't an, a, even adding a new maintainer. You say he was already a maintainer. Yeah. This is merely promoting him to an even stronger role in an existing project. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he is willing to accept uh, um, help for maintaining, uh, at least uh, yeah. working on pull requests. So yeah, we will see new release. You know. Great. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Hervé. Um, Hervé, your turn. What's the yes. status about the IRM64 uh, transition? So um, I mainly worked on uplink image. We had to build it again since it wasn't even uh, configured in CI.Trink in There was uh, some work needed for that. Uh, first, I restored the job on Slido Jenkins and put it, uh, put the publication on a part of Slido Jenkins instead of trusted. Then, before we, we then we, I've, uh, modified the build process to use npm ai command instead of npm install to get better minutes to build. Since npm install is updating dependencies depending on the package that is done and updating package clock that is done. And, uh, yeah, so we needed uh, NPMCI to use only package clock uh, that is done and not updating dependencies to be uh, more close, uh, the closest to the current uh, image in pod, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, more than two years old. So uh, after uh, testing and deploying the image. Um, I've been able to, just uh, before the, this meeting, the, uh, migrate the um, thing to ARM64 with success. Too. So yeah, it's running and uh, my uh, manual checks uh, were uh, successful too. Next step oh. will be, yep. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Next step will be uh, migrating uh, Start Manager and Datadog Cluster Agents. Uh, pull requests were in standby uh, while I was working on updating Uplink. Uh, and also there is, there are, I think, two more services uh, which need uh, an ARM before image to be deployed uh, to migrate it. But yeah, we are close to our first uh, items and we will uh, be next if we can uh, migrate uh, weekly that the uh, data thinking style to ARM64. Uh, the first, our first uh, Jenkins controller mm -hmm. without too many without any job. If you have 
question. So if yes. you have anything to add, uh, Damien? Mm, I didn't have time to to work on the Falco upgrade uh, because right now we have the Falco daemon set agent on RM64 nodes which are crashing. It's not blocking what you are doing. It's not blocking the next step identified here. But uh, I believe we should work on this. Um, I propose that uh, we we prioritize Falco over Kubernetes 1.26 upgrade because uh, at least on Azure, so we can still uh, upgrade Kube uh, to on Amazon this week. But uh, yeah, I believe we should start uh, deploying Falco. Given my availability, it needs to be announced because the risk is that if the new Falco deployments uh, shut down all connection on the public on the production cluster, we might have issues, right? <laughs> Um, the only way to test it on real life condition for network parts, since it interact with Azure API, I will try a deployment on um, a K3S, but honestly, we need to announce this one. It's, uh, I mean, the impact can be big, but we can change it very quickly. So better to announce it and do it early our time. Uh, the reason why I would want to prioritize this over Kubernetes 1.26 upgrade on Azure is that Kubernetes 1.26 will imply new virtual machine operating system images on all nodes. So it's already crashing with the latest RM64 node with 1.25. So I fear that could be worth. So better to fix Falco or remove Falco and then finish the upgrade on Azure. Does it make sense? And do you agree with that proposal? Yes. Yes, for me as well. Falco crashing by upgrading it to latest version or remove it. And remind me again, Falco provides uh, the uh, sec uh, runtime security system, and uh, it helps Kubernetes uh, to implement rules and policies a bit like what PSP were doing in the past. For instance, Falco uh, ensure that we don't install Docker images that are not allowed or from an uh, unallowed registry. You cannot use a DDU portal slash whatever image. No, I'm lying because I'm. I think I've added that rule, but. You cannot install arbitrary image in theory. Right. Uh, yeah. We could add way more policies, and there are a lot of alternatives to Falco. But right now, we have that instance. Maybe we can just remove it and continue. But yeah, the goal is let's have it minimalistically working on the cluster. So it's it's a form of policy enforcement engine that helps us comply with good practices for what we're doing on the cluster. Exactly. Makes sense. OK. Uh, the rest of the RM64 element are, will be for later, such as virtual machine, VPN, etc. So I propose we no, no need to work on it right now. Still okay to work on this, uh, Hervé, on the set manager, Datadog, and the upcoming services, at least? Yes. If you're interested by Falco, I don't mind you taking it. But by default, I don't mind taking it either. So. Yeah, it's just that we have to do it, and I don't have a preference. So based on your time and availability, you can choose, and your motivation on that topic. Yep. Uh, then upgrade to Kubernetes 1.26. Um, DigitalOcean was successfully upgraded last week. That went uh, really well. Uh, I had to do the upgrade through the Digital Ascent console now due to uh, um, yeah, a low level Terraform thing. I might have an issue, but it's really minor. I mean, between clicking on merge a pull request or clicking on upgrade a cluster, I don't see any problem. That has been documented on the issue. So that can be redone by someone else than me. That's really easy. And Terraform continue working and tracking the rest. So that's. That's not a problem. Um, so now the work in progress is um, EKS upgrades. Uh, I've covered most of the change, all the change log from both Amazon and Vanilla Kubernetes. 
Um, the only thing important for Amazon will be we will have to upgrade or ensure a minimum version of one of the CNI plugin. That's the plugin that takes care of having virtual network across all nodes connected to the AWS VPC systems. We need to be sure that that plugin has a certain minimum version before starting the upgrade. Otherwise, everything will be shut down during the whole upgrade. And that might need and might require help from AWS supports. That's written on their changelog. So that's the only important thing. The rest are usual upgrades, so no risk there. CNI plugin version as a requirement, otherwise ready to go. The impact, as a reminder, that's so we'll need to announce it is all the plugin builds on CI Jenkins IO will be run on DigitalOcean. So for this, no user impact. However, during the upgrade, the BOM build won't be able to run at all. Hmm. Okay. Um, the behavior, I'm not completely sure. I need to double check before I will write this down on the issue. But as far as I remember, since we will disable the agent cloud on CI Jenkins IO, if there is a build starting during the operation accidentally, it will wait on the build queue until the operation is finished and the cloud is added back to the queue. So worst case, that will just wait a bit more without consuming resources. Good, okay. So so for me as a user, it, it would just be perceived as a delay, not, exactly. not a failed, not an outright failure of the bill of materials build. Exactly. Okay. Until operation is finished. Great. Is there any problem, Mark, if at the end of the operation, I try to schedule a bomb build, at least uh, the first step, just to be sure that it can schedule the, on the upgraded node pool? You're welcome to do it. You bet. In fact, you might, at the end of the operation, if you have permissions on that repository, mm -hmm just perform a, um, a Dependabot scan and ask Dependabot to scan the repository for any changes. Because if there's been a recent plugin release, it will launch a, a, a very lightweight build anyway. So and that oh, was going yeah. to happen no matter what, right? Yeah, true. But that one only check the same node pool as the plugin builds, as far as I remember, while I need I... a bomb build to schedule um, on the, the specific ah. node pool. Okay. And, and so it, it, that those, those depend about process things certainly are very, very lightweight. Yeah. I don't remember what, how, how we made them lightweight, but I know that they are very, very lightweight. So you are welcome to launch a build on the master branch. Uh, it would be healthy to, after 15 minutes, cancel that build so that it doesn't allocate yep. all 200 or however many parallel machines it allocates. Cool. Um, given the constraint um, to do AKS, but need Falco upgrade before, so most probably next week. All right. Is there any question about the Kubernetes 1.26 upgrade? As a reminder, uh, DigitalOcean deprecate Kubernetes 1.26 uh, starting tomorrow. So mm. we are OK. Uh, the next one will be Azure. That will be in December. And Amazon, it's next year. So we are we are OK. Uh, so no, no more emergency on this one. Good. But better to finish it, of course. Um, Hervé, I don't remember if you and I were able to sync or if you were able to walk on Matomo. Neither. Okay. Wait. Nothing done. Not enough time. Um, I know that Packer goes work. So that one, Windows. Packer images are now using GOS. Um, external contributor. We had an external contribution um, added 
the support of Playwright, which is a framework on, uh, installed with Node.js to run headless browsers. And that one is now available on Linux. But the good thing is that uh, they had it and got a sanity check for that new application. So test-driven development almost, but at least non-regression. So um, did, did that addition add something that uses Playwright or it's only available as a tool to, to perform checks? Oh, no, it's it's added inside the CI Jenkins IO Linux worker, at, mm -hmm. whether container or a virtual machine. And the contributor was able to add the sanity check on GOS so that every build of that Linux template check for Playwright and its version. Ah, okay, but but it's it's not that we have active consumers of Playwright yet. Uh, we already had. Oh, it we already was, did. Yeah, it was installed in line during. Uh, we have one project. I don't remember which one. Uh, and now it has been moved as a tool inside, as a as a facility for everyone instead of installing it on each build. Got it. Okay, so instead of doing a tool download now, it's already there. Exactly, that's the idea. Got it. And it's kept updated with update CLI. It already was updated uh, two days after the initial release. So nice Thank work. You. Thanks for the contribution. And now Stefan is working on covering all the all the Linux tests. All the Linux tests with GUS. And then the next step will be uh, uh, add a GUS common uh, harness. So the idea is that most of the commands are called the same way on Windows and Linux. For instance, whether you are on Windows or Linux container virtual machine, the expectation of what we provide to developers on CI Jenkins IO is that Java space dash version should return GDK 11. Mm -hmm. And the result should be the same on whatever operating system. So that will be a common framework and then we will keep the current Linux and Windows that will be specific for each operating system when there is a operating system specificity such as uh, calling directly other GDK installation which require absolute path so you have to use different commands based on Windows or, or Linux. Um, new GDK 21 so uh, the work that Hervé did on the official Jenkins Docker images has been used, uh, and the work from Stefan and Bruno Verachten also. So now the last mile is uh, changing to the latest GA GDK 21 for the GDK tool on our controllers. Mm. But the Packer image and the Java version on every other pieces of the infrastructure are now using the latest GDK 21. So that's 21.0.1. .1. So, or is, yep. okay, great. Absolutely. Whip GDK tool. Oh, and the trusted build agent, my bad. Mm -hmm. uh, just a note, the S390X agent keep using the EA version for the tool at least. So thanks Harvey for the work you did on the on the official Jenkins image, I basically copy and pasted your work and it just worked out of the box. So thanks for that effort. Uh, is that is there any question on that topic? I more believe this, the... sorry? Yeah. No, no. More for a platform subject uh, using uh, binaries instead of the marine image, but. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But not really to the right? yeah. absolutely. So, and and Bruno had answered my question on System Three Hundred and Ninety. As far as he can tell, we mm -hmm. don't have anything to fear that they will never support System Three Hundred and Ninety run, running Java Twenty One. Eventually, we'll get a full release. Yep. Right. At least right now that we're the... using early access is better than nothing. Exactly. It's just they want to run a full uh, quality insurance framework. Right. And they didn't have time and resources to do it. That's why they provide a build with the partial framework testing area as it. They haven't decided yet. Maybe they will never, maybe they will. 
but it's really hard to to ask the probability here. Right. Yeah. And, I read Sorry. some issue on their on their mm -hmm. uh, some pull requests and some issue on their repository. Some architecture, uh, uh, some lesser architecture are unstable, have unstable build, so it's also yep. contribute to their hesitation. Yep. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. Um, on the topic that we didn't have time to spend on. Uh, I believe since Stefan is there, no work could have been done on the spinning up the Docker image library to create push tag at the same time for both GH and Docker. Um, I propose I will move this one to the backlog for next milestone until Stefan has a full complete week and then you can spend time on it or someone else. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. yes. It's important, but not a blocker. Back to backlog for now. Um, mirror status link from Get Jenkins IO. So I've started to check this topic. I still analyze this because uh, I don't want to go too deep, but yeah, uh, the status.html file uh, is not copied to the mirrors, but I'm not sure if it's just a few or others, and I need to check as part of the update center copy part during the packaging deployment. Um, not sure if it should be. Uh, we have to decide, is there a reason to copy it? If there is a reason, then uh, we need to make status HTML not mirrored and served by the Apache of GetJenkins.io. Mm. Or in the, or otherwise we need the mirror to copy it. That depends. Uh, that's also related to do we need it or to update the link. And also there is something fishy here, but that's that's not the first topic. Um, need to check requirements to add archive Jenkins you as the fallback. To have archive Jenkins IO as fallback. It's most probably bound with in Digital Ocean related. Uh, because right now we have OSUSL uh, as a fallback, which means if no mirror is served, that will fall back by default to OSUSL servers. And OSU OSL servers are not providing all the history while Archive does. So that's why I believe Archive Jenkins IO should be okay for that role. Instead of spinning up another service that will play that fallback role, I believe Archive already does it. So better to consolidate resources and increase the capacity if needed, but or move it somewhere else. But uh, I believe we should uh, yeah, use it instead. Any question? Uh, yeah, yep. No, we're good. Okay, thanks. Um, I still need to contact Belnet admins. I got the email, I forgot to send the mail uh, last milestone. Uh, I still believe the issue is on the end user issue and not on Belnet, but I need to check with them. Mm. And if they say it's an end user, then I will make them discuss that won't be our problem and I will right. re-enable Bennett then. Oh, I forgot, sorry, that one is important. Let's, let me move. Well, uh, keeping it here, sorry, Hervé. Uh, can you give yeah. us a head up on the... Um, yeah. uh, I will plan it, uh, I think, this week, uh, Thursday. Uh, I've got the backup. I still have to check in if we have. It doesn't. It should, but uh, I do. I need to check if I can restore the the root folder uh, files, which is the only one concerned by maybe by the deletion flag. Then we will we will be able to manage uh, make a request to. Like 
Yeah. Okay. So the dismaying thing there is what this means is we will have many of the backend extension, uh, many of the extensions entries that will correctly be deleted. That's a good thing, yeah. but it will yeah. now amplify the fact that our current extension indexer is broken and needs to be rewritten. All right. So Perfect. I, Perfect. I, it's unfortunate that that's what it's going to do. We're going to get more, more people saying, hey, where did all my extensions lists that I was, and the answer is, Sorry, our extension indexer is broken and we haven't been able to take the time yet to rewrite it. Whoopsie. And sorry, um, I just, uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Yep. I think that's all for that topic, Hervé. So planning Thursday. Yep. Cool. Um, next topic, planning for supported GDK version. GDK19 cleaned up as a um, need one last research to see if I haven't some leftovers. I tend to wait uh, usually 24 hours before the index of the research for GitHub stop showing me things that were uh, that are that have already been removed. Um, and then we have the two plus two plus two uh, uh, JEP. So um, we still need a CI Jenkins IO documentation update to point to the JEP, whatever situation it will be. I saw some development yesterday between uh, Mark and Basil on that topic, so it's not there yet. However, does it feel good for everyone? Does it feel right that we uh, we consider that topic termin uh, finished once we will have updated the CI Jenkins IO pointing to the JEP and we will update it later. At least we have a reference for people who want to see what will be the policy and we already know what is what the policy will be for the infra. If we, I propose if we need additional elements on the infra part, that should be part of the GEP implementation part. Is that okay for everyone? Yeah, and, and that aligns with what Basil suggested. Basil's recommendation was, let's create, he specifically said, he's not ready to approve the JEP unless it has checklists, what it means to do and add a new Jenkins version, recommend a new Jenkins version and re, or Java version and remove a Java version. And, and after looking through the things we did for Java 21, absolutely he's right we need a checklist right it's very much there are lots of things that have to happen we had changes in documentation changes in infra changes in container images changes in build tools all sorts of places so a checklist is a really good thing good point so yeah let's wait for at least the checklist for infra being uh, written on jep before closing that topic is that okay Right. Well, and, and certainly we can contribute because I've I've just started the process of creating that the 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 ad checklist using Basel's original template. There will be lots to do there because I'm I'm reading the old tickets from the completed tickets for Java 21 and putting checklist items. Oh yeah, we had we did that, didn't we? We did that. Any question, objection, need for clarification on this topic? Cool. Um, a few new items to add to the upcoming milestone. Um, Alex opened an issue about merging or pull requests is not canceling fair builds on CI Jenkins IO. That's a setup that we have applied on the GitHub organization scanning for all plugins, as he mentioned on the issue. So that's a setting to apply on CI Jenkins IO. Um, I mean, that's a good point. Uh, I think it was already the case. Uh, if no one object, I'm taking this action that should be done later today uh, to be done. And of course, just a reminder, long-term, you know, the unicorn world, unicorn world with rainbows, just in case it's not clear. Uh, it's, um, Job DSLization of CI Jenkins IO would avoid 
such configuration uh, shift, let's say. Or at least it will be easy for them to send a pull request and et cetera. Yes? The question may be off topic completely, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, does the use of merge queue help or has been studied for Oops, this big sorry, robot? Not... Okay. That, that won't solve the problem here. That will help on many other topics. That's true, but that would that has any nothing to her to have with that problem. Yeah, not this one. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was reacting to what Alex said in his fair, but in his issue, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Hervé, I believe you started to discuss with Christian earlier today about the the other topic. Start a new repo for the Jenkins Contributor Spotlight feature on Jenkins IO. I haven't read the topic yet. Yes. Uh, he was asking how to to migrate uh, uh, his uh, repo for the new Contributor Spotlight feature uh, to the Jenkins Nafra org. So I told him he could fork himself uh, is repo into the Jenkins Safra organization as he's a member of it. And I uh, asked him to open an update issue for his requirements. Uh, as I note, I have asked him if he wanted to, if he to replace stories of Jenkins at IO, but that's important. And I, yeah. Um... I can say him to open an issue first for the repo permissions and maybe later for. Uh, okay, I, I think the repository is like <clears throat> the last thing we will have to think about. Now we have to define the websites, the deployment, and then we yeah, will sure. shift left until the repository. That's really important because, I mean, I don't mind having a repository somewhere with permission, but I mean, that's a detail. Uh, here, your question was really good. Is it planned to replace stories Jenkins IO, the website fully by the content of the new websites? Yeah, so Damien, could you open stories.jenkins.io? That way everybody sees what the what mm -hmm. what so this is today as a collection of stories about users of Jenkins. Okay. And and the contributor spotlight is about people who are contributing to Jenkins. And and Chris has done an uh, Chris thank with help from with from Kevin and from uh, Christina Pizzagalli has done a a new web a new design for a page that focuses on these contributors. But my assumption was it's not replacing this. It would rather somehow live beside it. Now now since Kevin's here, I was assuming it would be contributors.jenkins.io instead of stories.jenkins.io because stories is already used for user stories but if chris's intent is to replace it with with have have the content that's on stories still available and contributor spotlight also available that's great as well then we could just use the stories repository or whatever can you can you guide on that kevin yeah, I don't think the idea at all is to replace any content at this point in time. It's just simply to add the contributor spotlight stuff. Um, we were talking, uh, and I've been commenting on the thread, but um, essentially looking at either uh, having it be a separate page within the stories.jenkins.io, kind of like how we have the blog and its pages and its posts and everything, or um, if it's easier to potentially have it be uh, a different domain like this contributors.jenkins.io as Mark had suggested or, or put out there. And then uh, my thought was, well, if we extend the stories definition and include that content, that gets more uh, viewers and interaction with the stories.jenkins.io page in the first place. So that uh, provides the content and gets more interaction, potentially more visitors and other, uh, you know, exploration on that. Um, whereas the contributors domain would spotlight the, the the point of what we're doing, which is more in line with the idea, but not necessarily uh, a better option for uh, rendering the page, providing it, deploying the page, stuff like that. So um, 
Yeah, it's not intended to replace stories.jenkins.io in any way. It's supposed to either extend that or become its own thing. Okay, so and now I don't so so if it's if it's being added to stories.jenkins.io as its URL, then it would seem logical to me that its content would go under the Jenkins infra slash stories repository. But then it's, I don't know if, if Jenkins infra slash stories is Gatsby generated or something else. So, so that's a different problem than for Chris to, to worry about. I, I don't, don't recall how stories is generated. Oh, it is Gatsby. Okay. It's Gatsby. It's okay. So then, then it may be that and if if Chris and others can figure out how to make the the design of the contributor page fit and navigate well with the stories site, all the better. That's wonderful. But that's different, I think, than the separate repository he's currently got. Or or we need a way to on a single top level domain use two GitHub repositories to contribute to mm -hmm. it, which is also fine. I would yeah. go ahead. I don't know. Evan. I mean, I would suggest, but at first yep. sight, I would suggest uh, getting this new website part website running with our own contributors and for uh, for getting what a uh, sense of what is what it looks like for contributor to start working on it maybe, and then see if it can be uh, if it can uh, how it can be integrated in stories. And if a second repo is needed, or if it can be included in the stories one, that's how I would have. Yeah, and and for me that would that would be fine as well. I just I don't want to lose the content of stories. I, I like I like what you're saying, Hervé. I think if we if we get a first first visual vision visual of it, although we've actually already got that first visual in a prototype site, if I remember correctly, Kevin. He's already deploying to the pre a preview site. Yeah, and I just included that um, link in the chat, so uh, it is there. It's uh, fully available. It's clickable. Everything uh, leads to the other parts of the site. So um, we do have a live example for what has already been designed. Okay. Contributors Jenkins IO. So that's the main question. Uh, I would say. Um, deploying on the, uh, on the same website, by website, I mean a constant domain name and then eventually adding some uh, relative path, that that is quickly a nightmare. And that is not sustainable, never has been since the 25 vice chair. So I don't, I don't think we should try this kind of uh, word thing. However, um, either like Mark did, I, I think my personal opinion is either uh, you you work on integrating it inside stories Jenkins IO web code, which is already Gatsby as Mark proposed, or the solution yeah, that you mentioned with a secondary website, we could have a redirection. Like if you go from stories Jenkins IO, you can add a top level uh, contributor story that sends to slash contributors, which will trigger a redirect to the contributors.jenkins.io website, for instance, which we make uh, two different life cycle, contribution life cycle, but we still have a redirection from both. And using the um, what's web component stuff, we could have an unified uh, design between both if needed. Does it make sense? No. Yeah. So, so I think what you're describing for me would be, we've got today we've got a, a in the web component we have a, a success stories clickable link on the top bar. And, and we would add contributor stories as an additional clickable link in that top bar. I, I don't think we're anywhere near overflowing the, the width of the top bar. So that seems reasonable to me. Yeah, and I just looked at the preview website. It's already integrating the Jenkins IO component, not on the home page, but on the other one. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, I also think, um, I think we've been working under the idea of adding it as a separate link to the components. So Chris is, um, in my email thread with Chris, he's already aware, very well aware of that and plans on submitting that um, ticket as well, so. Okay, so if it's a separate component, then it doesn't need to be on stories.jenkins.io at all, then I think is what you're saying. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I mean, I was, 
I wasn't sure what would be easier and what would be more manageable for the organi- the repo or the organization itself. So um, mm-hmm. I thought having it be a separate site like contributors.jenkins.io might be easier in that sense because like we said, we can always redirect, we can connect, we can get mm-hmm. it other various other ways. We have the components to help us connect everything. So um, th- I just wasn't sure if that would be more work in the background, basically. Honestly, we adapt. It's just that the, having two uh, isolated websites merge on single website deployment tends to be a nightmare really quickly. It starts to be visible only for the SRE, but quickly it will be the case of the person contributing it to. Because most of the time it's, okay, for a given URL, where do I contribute to? And then the question starts to say, oh, no, it's nightmare. Um, no problem, though, to have a subdomain. For instance, I don't say we should. I just say it's really easy to have something such as contributors.stories.jenkins.io. This one worked with the secondary website option because subdomains are absolutely a different beast than uh, stories.jenkins.io slash contributors, for instance. So we could have users.stories.jenkins.io too. Absolutely. So that's also a way to unify both websites with stories Jenkins.io being a, a kind of wrapper that could send you to one or the other in the future. But that, that's still the idea of a secondary website like you proposed. Yeah, no, that, I think that works great. I think that would be a good all, like overall solution combining both using it to, as a subdomain instead of just a, a domain. Yeah. User stories is not mandatory at all. And, yeah. Yeah, these and are just thinking about the to, yeah. CEO, SEO, SEO, which, is, which might be impacted by using a subdomain. Like that. I don't know if they will benefit from the uh, pair on from stories that you can set up, but yeah. It's okay. a detail, it's, yeah. Good to know. Um, okay, so that means now the work you started early, uh, it's absolutely in line with this now that we have covered the, the high level thing. That means, c- c- can you remind us uh, what you you drove was, uh, Chris to do? I've uh, asked him uh, to open up a desk to fork his repo into Jenkins Safra. Yes, son. And I have also proposed him to put in place a, a specific team for this mm-hmm. uh, website. Um, yeah. To fork he, the repo he to... some permission already, but uh, when uh, when uh, when the team will be defined, I think uh, it was uh, there. Um, he and you, Kevin, will be integrated in the system. And remove mm-hmm. as individual contributor. Okay. okay. Um, which means then, the next yeah. step are CI, you... CD, production. These are the main top level components. Is that okay? Or do you see other top level components? So CI is preview websites. Right. So I'm not going on details. Uh, Eric, if you mm. want to take that topic, yeah, I don't mind or I can do. But yeah. the idea here is to define uh, the, the checklists like uh, Basil like. Uh, same thing like, here. Like Mark likes. Mark's addicted uh, Mark, to checklists. <laughs> right. So I, I'll, I'll detail the different uh, steps we'll have to do. Um, should I continue on this desk or? Yes, absolutely. No, no, no. Uh, that 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 desk should be a good wrapper for everyone. Is that okay? okay. Or uh, unless you prefer having a no, tiny no, no, no. level absolutely desk. Absolutely not. I, I was uh, at first. I've asked him for different distinct uh, address, but yeah, having one on top point of reference is good. I will okay. probably look at. Yeah. Same as the reason I was about to say that. Yep. 
in the future get to be does, applied. Okay. Does it make sense uh, for you that, prop that on that order? I, I'm leaving willingly the details here. We can discuss them in pair or next week, or if you want to define them before, if you have the time. It's just that we can now uh, go back to Chris saying, okay, now we have an idea. We discussed it as on the high level. We have the road, we see the direction, and now we can uh, go forward uh, on the implementation parts. Yep. Is it good for everyone? Yes. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. Quick check if we have new issues. Um, we had Adbun over Arten. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I haven't checked it yet. Where is my okay? Here. Yeah. It's forwarding Bruno to the Vitac team, so he will be able to contribute more easily. Okay, if I want to open the page, so this restart, restart. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Add Bruno Verarten. Okay, so that one, I believe uh, you and I can do it. Uh, I saw you send me a message yesterday for, for this one, uh, Harvey. So I propose we plan it for the next milestone. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Removing triage. Um, mirror bits pod got pod restart on public gates. Uh, that's something that Stefan coped last week while working on the mirror bits. Uh, yeah, we have HTTP 5.0 errors that uh, lasted for months. Um, no error message associated. Uh, we don't see any alerts or any issue. No one has complained yet. So that's not good, but that's not bad. Um, I propose that this goes to the backlog mainly because since we have uh, most probably updates of mirror bits coming soon, uh, that will work on it. However, uh, if someone wants to debug it, but I don't think it's a blocker now, we might most probably have to enable uh, extensive logging. Uh, the chart has been updated on the new mirror bit parent, but that require switching the old instance to the new chart. Have you seen other elements other than these elements survey on your side? Um loosely related, but uh, going on the talk for looking at another pod, I saw that one of their uh, monitors I recommend is uh, pod uh, hash to backup. At this point, we don't have any actionable, so yeah. Yes, why not? That would have allowed us to see that earlier, but I don't think it would have changed anything else than that, except adding yeah. an issue, because it's not OM killed. It's just the pod is restarted and the service goes back to normal and we don't have error log. So that that's still yeah. hard. So yeah, we'll see if the new mirror bits built with a way more modern Golang version with improved GC and memory management and resource management won't change and improve the situation here because the Golang version used to build mirror bits is from 2018. Yep. <laughs> so I propose we move it to backlog. Is that okay for you? Yes. Um, and the last one has been added by Stefan that could be part of update of the UC, but maybe not yet. Uh, now we are installing kubectl on the trusted agent with the, the same version as our cluster. Once we will have upgraded that cluster to Kubernetes 1.26, we will want kubectl to be updated to the same version. Spoiler alert, that will be for 1.27 because Stefan already moved kubectl to 1.26 in advance because we already use kubectl 1.26 everywhere on client side. But still we want to keep it updated. So that one should be a, an easy one for anyone who want to play with update CLI. Uh, because you have to find a version on a rep public repository on a text file and update a file on another repository. That's a pure update CLI thing, and that should be 
doable. So anyone uh, interested can start on this one. Would first issue without milestone? Absolutely. I love when yeah, the plan yeah. comes together. I'm wondering if we should keep only one of these good first issue label, but it's yeah, hard to happen. Okay. But it's not important. Okay. Uh, why not? <laughs> not sure what what to say. Uh, good first issue and backlog. Okay. These are the last new issues. Is there anything else you want to add? Or, um, or are we okay to close the meeting? Okay to close. Cool. So okay. I'm stopping the screen share. I'm stopping the recording. So bye-bye for everyone watching us.